Hi everyone, let's solve a tough DLR question today from CAT 2017 from arrangements topic. And if someone wants to score good marks in this particular section, then I would have recommended to leave this set altogether. It was that difficult. But the only way to learn how DLR constraints are actually to be decoded is by solving a tough DLR question. So let's get started with it. You are going to observe three rules that are going to keep coming back again and again in this entire video, which I used during my preparation and they helped me get better in DILR. The first was that if there's a constraint that has been given to you, then in most likely cases, you are going to make use of it in one way or the other. The only thing you need to figure out is why it has been given to you in the first place. The second rule is to understand that no matter how difficult a question, the question paper setter wants you to solve it which means that they would be giving you some clues that make it possible to solve a difficult question in less than 10 minutes. Your objective is to find what those clues are. And finally, no matter how difficult a set, the only thing that makes it difficult is your inability to picture the constraint, which is what happens when there are multiple possibilities to a set. The only thing that makes it difficult is you not being able to plot all the possibilities in your head or on paper. So let's get started with the question now. Eight friends, Ajit, Byomkesh, Gargi, Jayanta, Kikira, Manik, Pradosh and Tapesh are going to Delhi from Kolkata by a flight operated by Cheap Air. So the only thing that's there in my head is that all the names are starting with a different letter. So I can simply write them like this. Let's move on. In the flight, sitting is arranged in 30 rows numbered 1 to 30, each consisting of 6 seats marked by letters A to F from left to right respectively. So it's similar to how it's in the plane as well. Seats A to C are left of the aisle and D to F are on the right of the aisle. Seats A and F are by the windows and are referred to as the window seats. C and D are by the aisle. So I'm reading it fast because I'm realizing it's similar to how it's in the plane as well. Seats marked by consecutive letters are called consecutive seats. Now the important thing is that he's mentioning, the person who has set the paper is mentioning to you what consecutive letters are, which means that there might be a constraint that's making use of it. So let's read it again. Seats marked by consecutive letters are called consecutive seats or seats next to each other, which means that B and C are consecutive seats, C and D are consecutive seats and so on and so forth. A seat number is a combination of the row number followed by the letter similar to how it's in the plane. So 1A will be a window seat in the left first row. Got it. So this is this long paragraph. All it's telling you, the only thing that's important in this entire paragraph is the statement where it says what are consecutive seats. Otherwise, everything is similar to how it's in the actual plane as well. Let's read ahead. GPO charges rupees 1000 extra for any seats in rows 1, 12 and 13 for extra leg room. For rows 2 and 10, it charges rupees 300 extra for window seats and rupees 500 extra for aisle seats. For rows 11 and 14 to 20, it charges rupees 200 extra for window seats and 400 extra for aisle seats. Okay, let me read this again. For rows 11 and 14 to 20, it charges this much, which is very weird because Till now, the picture that's coming in my head shows that 1, 12 and 13 are extra charged, like they're 1000 per seat extra. 2 to 10 have a certain charge and then 11 has the same charge as 14 to 20, which makes no sense to me. Because if there was a person who's setting the paper, that person could have easily said 2 to 11 is of the same charge. And then 14 to 20 are of different charge. Beach may 12, 13 have an extra leg room and hence they are charged differently. Why is 11 having the same charge as 14 to 20? So this is a weird constraint in between. But whatever the picture is in front of you, whatever is there in my head right now. And other seats are at no extra charge. Got it. So let's read these six constraints that have been given to us in this question now. Okay. So first, the eight friends were seated in six different rows. Okay. They occupy three window seats, four aisle seats and one middle seat. Okay. Seven of them had to pay extra amounts totaling to 4,600 for their choice of seats. One of them did not pay any additional amount for his or her choice of seat. Okay. Jamta, Ajit and Byomkesh were sitting in seats marked by the same letter in consecutive rows. Okay. In increasing order of row numbers. 
increasing order so matlab 1 2 3 or 3 4 5 okay but all of them paid different amounts for their choice of seat okay so this is very important all of them paid different amounts for their choice of seat they are sitting in consecutive rows ek ke piche ek in increasing order one of these amounts may be zero okay ye to chhod do but what he is saying is the picture that's there in my head i have already drawn it it's j a b sitting like this paying different amounts hmm now i know why he mentioned row number 11 but let's come back to this later gargi was sitting next to kikira and manik was sitting next to jayanta next to matlab consecutive seats this is that constraint that has been mentioned in the paragraph above so now we know that gk or kg or mj and jm they are sitting together pradosh and tapesh were sitting in seats marked by the same letter okay matlab window hai to window aisle hai to aisle in consecutive rows in increasing order of row numbers but they paid different amounts for their choices of seats one of these may be zero got it iska matlab that they are sitting in the same way one ke piche two ya two ke piche three so and and so forth but they paid different amounts so these are the six constraints and we know which one we are going to begin with we are going to begin with constraint number 4 which clearly hints that row number 11 is going to be a part of it because otherwise there are no three consecutive rows which are different priced now you would know why that statement above has been mentioned in the paragraph so this is what i call as every constraint or every line has some use or it has to be decoded in one way or the other so this is where that 11 wala arc sum point is coming into play if you would have read it carefully you would realize that it makes no sense why 11 and then 14 to 20 that's because they wanted to make sure that there are three rows which are priced different so now we have row number 10 11 and 12 and we already know that here j a and b are sitting in the same constraint it says that j a b are sitting at seats with the same letter which means they are either at the window seats or at the aisle seats why not the middle seats because they paid different amounts so if they are sitting either in the window seats or in the aisle seat the next constraint that comes into picture is something which gets related to this constraint so we already have another constraint constraint number 5 in which manik and janta have been mentioned and janta has also been mentioned in constraint number 4 so there's a linkage that i can draw here so now i know that m is sitting at a consecutive seat next to j if janta or jab are sitting at window seats then the only place where m can be seated is in a middle seat but if jab are at aisle seats then there are two possibilities m could be at a middle seat or m could also be at an aisle seat because you remember consecutive seats means c and d as well so this is another important point where a trickier question gets established when a constraint becomes difficult to decode which is why you need to read every statement very carefully now the issue when a question reaches a stage like this is that there are so many possibilities that it becomes difficult for you to picture it which makes the question difficult so one of the ways to solve this is to look for clues that the paper setter would have set in place to make this question easier and the clue here is constraint number 3 where they say that seven people paid extra amounts totaling to rupees 4600 now the interesting part is that if you divide 4600 by 7 it amounts to greater than 600 and the pricing that you have available 200 300 400 500 and 1000 the only way someone on average would have paid more than 600 is when there would be at least one person paying 1000 bucks and if you follow the same process that is you deduct 1000 out of 4600 you are left with 3600 you divide it by 6 again you get 600 which means there's another person who paid 1000 rupees and similarly you go on you would realize that when you divide 2600 by 5 you get again more than 500 which means there is another person who paid 1000 rupees then you're left with 1600 which needs to be divided in four people averaging out to 400 which is when you can probably stop and you would realize that there are three people who paid 1000 rupees for their seats and you don't know about the rest of four but they totaled to 1600 now let's look at the two possibilities if jab were sitting at the window seats then they would have paid this much amount m would not have paid anything because he would be sitting in the middle seat in that case and out of the four people that remain two would have paid 1000 rupees each we don't know about the rest of the two the only thing we know is that they paid for sure 
So if we total this up and we subtract it from 4600, we are left with 1100. And averaging out between two people, it amounts to more than 500, which is not possible. Hence, J, A, B were not sitting at the window seats. They must definitely be sitting at the aisle seats. But we don't know where M might be sitting. But what we know for sure is that out of a total of four aisle seats, three have been occupied by J, A, B. And the remaining three window seats, one middle seat and one aisle seat have to be occupied by P, T, M, G and K. Now P, T are sitting at the same lettered seats, which means that they have occupied the window seats. And we are left with one window seat one middle seat and one aisle seat. Now M is not sitting at a window seat for sure, which means either of G or K have to take that place. And ultimately the next person, because there are consecutive seats where G and K are sitting, the other person would be at a middle seat, which makes only one seat available for M, which is an aisle seat. So we already have the rows and the kinds of seats available for M, J and B. We also know the kind of seats where PT are sitting, that is window seats. And we know that GK misses someone is sitting at a window seat and someone is sitting in the middle seat. Now we need to figure out the rows where these people are sitting. In order to do that, let's deduct the amount that's already been spent out of the total amount. So M, J and B together spent 2400 extra on their seats out of 4600, leaving 2200, out of which we know at least two people already spent 1000 rupees, leaving 200 as the balance. So out of the four people that are remaining, that is P, T, G and K, two people spent 1000 each. One person spent 200, which must be on a window seat, and another person paid nothing. Now, since PT are sitting at seats which paid different amounts, they could not have paid the 1000 each. So the only place where P could be sitting is at a window seat which paid 200 bucks and T was sitting at a place in a window seat which paid zero rupees, which means they were sitting in row number 20 and 21 because there are no other possibilities for the same. And when it comes to GK, since they paid 1000 each, they must be either in row 1, 12 or 13. And they cannot be in 12 because we already know that's where B is sitting. So they must be either in row 1 or in row 13, but we don't know exactly where. So this is the only part till which this question can be solved. You cannot deduce further unless you have more constraints and basis the information that we have derived till now, all the questions of this particular set could actually be answered very easily. You know, my only objective behind making this video was to ensure that from now on, when you solve DILR questions, you look for intentional clues and constraints that have been put in place for you to decode them. For example, the 4600 Wala point or the row number 11 was mentioned specifically so that it could make easier to solve this question. And someone who could not identify these clues while, re while reading the question in the first place might have taken a long time to try understanding how this question was to be solved. I'm not saying this is the shortest method to solve this question. There might be a shorter method as well. But all I'm saying is develop that approach of thinking from the point of view of the paper setter rather than an aspirant who is appearing for the exam. That's surely going to help you with DILR. So with this, I would like to close the video. If you have any doubts, feel free to put them in the comments. And you can also watch the concerned video as well as the playlist linked below. This is on DILR specifically. Thanks a lot for watching this.